The end of the Civil War brought with it a need to put the nation back together again. The process of making this happen would be a long and tiring one, one that some people would argue we are still in the process of dealing with today. More importantly than what would happen to the states themselves would be what happened to the over 4 million soon-to-be former slaves living in the country. Thanks to the 13th Amendment, they were now free and would never be in a position to undergo the evils of slavery again. The problems that slaves faced were that they were people without an education, without many employable skills, without any means of providing for themselves, and living in a country where the majority of people in no way saw them as equals. Their quest for the next 100 years was to gain the equality that had promised them as a result of the Civil War. This process was not without its hiccups along the way. After the ruling of the Supreme Court in the Plessy v. Ferguson case in 1896, the law of the land was separate but equal. This meant that separate facilities could be established for the different races so long as they were equal. The problem was that separate could not ever be equal, and so the battle for true equality that had begun as slaves continued into the 20th century. With the end of World War II, it seemed time for the struggle for equality to begin again. In the 1950s, events quickly unfolded in an effort for African Americans to achieve the equality that they had so long deserved. People like Emmett Till, Rosa Parks, James Meredith, and Elizabeth Eckford became the frontline examples of the need for things to change in the country. Even with them, it would take another decade for more guarantees to legal equality to ensure what they had worked for. The early 1960s saw African Americans participate in sit-ins and the Freedom Rides. Some white Southerners responded with fire hoses, attack dogs, and church bombings. Martin Luther King Jr.'s efforts to organize the March on Washington brought support from across the country from African Americans who believed this display of numbers would convince members of Congress the time for true legal equality had come, and many whites who believed that the violence that had gone along with peaceful efforts for equality was unacceptable and needed to end. By the middle of the 1960s, African Americans had gained a measure of legal equality, but many believed that true equality might never arrive. Many other groups took strength from the attempts of African Americans to gain equality. Women, Hispanic Americans, American Indians, the handicapped, and people of different sexual orientation saw their opportunity to gain equal status as well. From the 1960s through today, the fight of many of these groups continues, and we are left to ask the question as to if and when we will live up to the creed of the United States, that all men are created equal.